some of cinema's scariest monsters are ones that can be found in our own backyards. Birds, snakes, mice, and of course, spiders. The real star of this next movie, Arachnophobia, an almost cult classic. Even though Arachnophobia was an original movie script, it feels like it could have been a best-selling novel that was turned into a movie. It's got the jungle expedition elements of Michael Crichton and the small town atmosphere of Stephen King. Mix in some visual inspiration from Hitchcock and the unmistakable influence of executive producer Steven Spielberg and you've got the complete package for a very fun horror movie. Ah! Released in 1990, Arachnophobia marked the directorial debut of Amblin producer Frank Marshall. Uh, the only way that this is going to be scary is to include the spiders in the same shot with the actors. And so we've been designing the shots. So when you start on a person, you pan over, there's a spider there. And the audience will know that these spiders are very, very close to all the actors. It was also the debut feature of Disney's Hollywood Pictures label a division that was intended to be similar in vain to Touchstone, so Disney could release more adult-oriented films. Marshall would also later direct another movie about killer animals, this time based on a Michael Crichton novel, Congo, in 1995, which I'll probably come back to at a later date. Every word of it was absolutely true. But for having never directed a movie before, Arachnophobia is a really strong debut for Marshall. A lot of horror movies involving killer animals seem to overlook the characters in favor of the jump scares and special effects, but this movie is really rooted in its great characters. Something you can tell came from the influence of Steven Spielberg. But our brains secrete a neurotransmitter and enables us to deal with them. Come on. I don't think I have that particular neurotransmitter. As it's a formula he perfected with Jaws, and much like Jaws, a lot of the early spider attacks in this movie are framed in a subtle way that still manages to be terrifying. Even though the title implies it, this movie is definitely not for the arachnophobe. Are you okay? It's okay. The hell with that? I don't even have a problem with spiders, but they are captured in this movie in just a purely unnerving way. Everybody just get up very slowly. The story centers around Ross Jennings, played by Jeff Daniels, and his family. He and his family have just moved from San Francisco to the small town of Canaima, California, so Ross can take over for the town's only doctor. Though upon their arrival, the aging doctor has second thoughts. I'm not ready to retire, doctor. And if my wife can't rush me into it, you sure as hell can't either. In conjunction with the Jennings family arriving in town, Another resident also moves in. This one a deadly spider that hitched a ride in the coffin of a nature photographer that had killed in Venezuela. That's gotta hurt! It's gotta hurt! <coughs> Coincidentally, this Venezuelan spider ends up in the Jennings family barn, where it mates with an ordinary house spider. spawning an army of deadly hybrid spiders. The spiders chosen for this movie were actually Avondale spiders from New Zealand, a harmless yet terrifying looking breed. And we got them all little passports, and they came over here to the United States, and they're now here working on the set, and they're very happy in their spider condo. These hybrid spiders begin slowly killing off the town's residents one by one. First, Ross's lone patient in town, then a high school football player Ross had recently examined, and soon the aging doctor himself. Damn! What's wrong? Some damn thing bit me. Earth! Because just a spot. Because! <laughs> Earning Ross the nickname Dr. Death. Bunny Beachwood says that everybody's calling you Dr. Death. Well, that's just silly, Shelly. Ross, himself a sufferer of arachnophobia, Honey, we're in the living room. We need you to kill a spider. Suspects spiders as the culprit, though few in town take him seriously. I want an autopsy. Never. Oh, look, she was my patient. All right. Mine for 40 years. God knows Margaret wouldn't want to be butchered, and nobody in this town would want that for her. 
The sheriff and the coroner just don't see the connection between these deaths. You start pulling citizens out of the ground that should be enjoying their eternal rest in that room full of patients you were locked into. Lloyd, I'll cancer. just get a court order. And just when you think the movie has introduced all of its characters, it unveils its best one. Delbert McClintock, played by John Goodman. An exterminator with a particular hatred for eight-legged critters. There's no spider here. But I will hunt down the alleged arachnid and spread some the kingdom come. Watching this character makes me wish there had been a buddy comedy with Delbert and Christopher Walken's character from Mouse Hunt. Got mice. Now, I've talked about John Goodman before in this series with King Ralph, but I'm just going to use this as yet another opportunity to sing his praises. He just seems to have so much fun with every role, and this is no exception. No, I frankly doubt the nest is in the barn. Well, I frankly know it is, Delbert. I was in the barn. I saw a web. There is a web in the barn. A web would indicate an arachnoid presence. If you're looking for another fun movie to check out this time of year, I highly recommend Joe Dante's Matinee, in which Goodman plays B-movie producer Lawrence Woolsey. Yes, the atomic bomb is terrible. But more terrible still are the effects of atomic mutation. Hello, I'm Lawrence Woolsey. It's a great horror comedy that also gets overlooked this time of year. Anyway, back to arachnophobia. Delbert is originally called in to investigate the termites at the Jenkins home. Would anybody object if I tore this floor out? I would. False alarm, then lead on. But later becomes the only man with the tools needed to combat this growing spider army in town. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> he, along with Ross, the town sheriff, and a team of entomologists from Venezuela, become the only line of defense against the rapidly growing spider army. Mind you have brought it with you. Actually, it's probably still in the bottom of my shoe. Having the lead character suffer from arachnophobia himself is just a great story choice, as the movie becomes about Ross facing his fear of spiders to save his family and the town, which culminates in a battle that features hundreds of live spiders on screen at the same time. While this movie was generally well received by critics, today it seems to not get the attention it truly deserves. The movie doesn't go over the top into gruesome, awful, terrible horror. It's kind of playful horror. It's even a, I think it's a movie that younger kids will yeah. enjoy, grade school kids, because yeah. they can scream and they can be frightened without it being too real. That's where the John Goodman character comes in. Yeah. Just as when the, the body count starts to mount, he comes in playfully, and the movie does a nice job, and it's hard to do, of shifting tone. Yeah, that's right. Oh. I'm bad. Whether you're afraid of spiders or not, Arachnophobia is worth checking out. It's a rare horror movie that doesn't prioritize scares over the story. It's not an over-the-top gore fest either, but rather an eerie and subtle monster flick that never stops having fun with its premise. No room for amateurs in this game. 